Hey there friends and welcome back to the Seaside Lane channel where we embark on a journey to serve our families with God's word and cleaning. So get yourself ready, brush your teeth, and join me today. The cleaning is going to be very short and sweet, but it can be impactful and I challenge you to get up and accomplish maybe just one easy task today. Maybe something that's been lingering on your to-do list, making your bed, organizing that closet that's overflowing, or just tackling that sink of dirty dishes. I want you to conquer it with me together for the first few minutes of cleaning and let's see the results. And I'm here to cheer you on. So today I am just going to tidy my master bedroom to make the bed and clean the bathroom and clean off our desks. And then I'm going to paint a portrait of my three daughters that I wanted to share with you as well. If we have not met, I am Morgan Lane. I am a wife and I am a mama to three little girls and it is my heart and soul and passion to keep my home tidy and to serve my family by doing laundry, doing dishes, the daily things of service for them to create a home that is a haven, but I also desire to hide God's word in my heart and his truths and worship and sermons and everything throughout my day of my chores to hide God in my heart and to not only have a home that is physically clean, but to have a heart that is also making my home a place that others want to be. So today is not a whole house clean or a deep clean or a anything intense clean. This is really just tidying up my bedroom. And I decided to share this with you because procrastination has sort of been the word of the week with my cleaning and my chores and different things and putting it off. And I decided that it's okay to be simple and to slowly clean up just one space or one spot and even set a timer for 10 minutes and just try to knock something out because Sometimes we need that domino effect to get it going. And there's always paint and cups of paint water on my desk because I am an artist and I do like to paint. My desk always has art stuff to be cleaned up and my husband's always has things like chips and salsa and his favorite snacks and real estate books. <laughs> so at the end of this video, I am going to show you a portrait painting of the side profile silhouettes of my three daughters. You are eight, six, and four, and this is a painting that I have been wanting to do for a while of just the sides of their face in this season of life that we're in and their age, and they're just sweet little girls and it's so precious, and I love doing art projects where it kind of like capsules time. I even painted little black numbers under each ponytail in my painting to show the age that they are because I know I'll look back and I'll want to like know how old they were and mm -hmm. what their faces looked like. So I will share more of that in a little bit as I paint it later on. And I want to show you a rock. What do you think of this rock? It reminds me of like a Frozen 2 Enchanted Forest rock. My husband has seen these on the side of the road every time we go to like Georgia and Tennessee and decided he wanted it for his desk decor because he likes to stack the little ones from the beach. And so he brought one home this year. So that is his famous Georgia rock. So keep on tidying, I moved on to the bathroom. So as I was painting my portrait painting, I was really contemplating the entire time as I was painting just about instilling and teaching my girls about whose they are and who they belong to and their value in Christ and just how much their king adores them and loves them. And then I was thinking about my own past because painting portraits takes like it took me about six hours and I just pray and I talk to God as I paint. And so I was thinking about all the women in my life that have told me those same exact truths. And I, I was just smiling. I was kind of like beaming by the end of painting because my story is absolutely one of those God graces stories of being in my mom's belly in the pews of church and growing up in one of the most incredible God-loving families and having so many different women throughout my life. I think about, I, I was in Girl Scouts, but I was also in like a little Bible study in early elementary age called Apple Seeds and we were the Apple Seed Girls and we would read God's word and do crafts and then going into middle school, I remember one of my youth group leaders who would always listen and pour God's word in, started this thing called Click. So the Click was C-L-I, celebrating life in Christ is what was the alliteration for it. So I really did have such a community even through middle school and high school of those 
girls' gatherings. Oh, so the cleaning's already done. My little one was peering out the window and she saw her, her sisters were home from paddle boarding with daddy and they were jumping in the pool. So that was it. That was the bedroom clean for the day. I was gonna film more of a house clean for you, but that was it. So we cleaned the bedroom and then we went swimming and then I painted and it was a wonderful Saturday. But so anyways, as I was painting this, it was a large painting. It was 36 by 24 and the profiles of my girls. And I was thinking about my own story. And so just, I had that click, which was a bunch of girls that were middle school and high school. And these women within our church opened their homes to us. I think it was once a month or every two weeks. And they instilled in us so many beautiful things about what God, how he designed us as women and just how beautiful we are and how much he loves us. And that was a huge foundation for me as well, just to have these other women in my life, so youth leaders and other moms in our church, and also my mom, who all just always told me how much the Lord loved me. And so when I was painting this, this was kind of my same thought, is that I was thinking about my own daughters, and I wanted to paint them, and I wanted to paint the verse from Psalm 139, verse 14 through 15, below it, just to remind them and show them how fearfully and wonderfully made that they are. So I'm going to read you the entire chapter of Psalm 139 and just let it wash over you as you keep cleaning, if you're still working on your cleaning task, and just listen to his word. So it's titled, Search Me, O God, and Know My Heart. Verse 1 starts, O Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down. You are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. You hem in me behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, and I cannot attain it. Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in Shiloh, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the utmost parts of the sea, even then... Your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, Surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light and the light about me by night, I'm going to flip in the page. Even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as day, for darkness has as light is as light with you. And so here is the part that I painted at the bottom of the painting of the girls. And it's first I painted 14 and 15, but here's 13, 14, and 15. It says, For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance, and your book were written, every one of them, the days that were formed for me when as yet there was none of them. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. If I would count them, they're more than the sand. I awake and I'm still with you. So even now as they're little, I know that even the four-year-old, she can't read, but I wanted this to be something that was hanging on my wall that as they grow to middle school, high school, teenagers, and they walk by this, that they would read the verse because they'll be able to read at that point and that they would just know that the Lord loves them and created them so perfectly even on difficult days and that just whose they are. So I wrote a little poem slash letter or ode to them, which it kind of just came to me as I was painting this, you know, paint, write all at once because that's what I like to do. But so this is what I wrote to my daughters, delicate brushstrokes reveal radiant silhouettes of my three sweet little women. They have infinite wonder within. Each stroke is a testament to the unique beauty embedded within their souls, a mere representation that every fiber of their being, from each eyelash to their intricate personalities, were designed with such care because they are fearfully and wonderfully made. They were intricately woven by the same creator who hung the universe and paints the skies. Each quality was handpicked for a divine purpose. There is such strength grace, and individuality woven into their existence. They're not just loved and adored by me, but by their king, by the king of kings. I watch as each stroke of their existence is a masterpiece to be treasured. 
and also very much so am reminded that even though I may be a grown woman, he knitted me years ago with the very intention to be their mother, to pray over them and to teach them whose they are. And that is it. That is what I wrote. And I wrote like, you are his, they are his, I am his. And I think that was such a beautiful thing that the Lord allowed me to see even as a young girl, just that I was his and that I was so treasured and so loved. And that created such a platform of, of confidence and trust in him. And I don't know, it's just amazing. So if you haven't been reminded lately that you are his, you are. And I think that also has helped me so much just in marriage, in motherhood, in, in it, it even our spouse will, will fail us or our kids will get upset with us or we will fail them. But like we have a king of kings who is in tune to every attention to detail in our lives and just how we function and knows every hair on our head. And that that is how the Lord loves and sees me. One of my very favorite song lyrics lately from Upper Room has been the Give Me Jesus song. And the lyrics start out and they say, I don't want anything but you. You're more than every dream come true. All of the things I thought I wanted don't come close to knowing you. Now that I'm yours and you are mine, your love is the secret that I find. I'll spend forever in the pleasure I found looking into your eyes. And then it talks about give me Jesus, give me Jesus. You can have all this world and even the bridge is... Like, I don't want anyone else, and I don't need anything else. Like, Jesus, you are my one thing. And that is so much of how my heart feels. It's just, even, he's just the one thing. He is the one thing that is so reliable and so dependable and loves me so much and is able to launch and fuel me for everything else. And so that is really all I have for you guys today, my little passionate prayer and encouragement that, just fall in love with the creator because it's going to take forever and ever to know him and that is the beauty of it is that even as a little girl at five in my apple seeds group to a grown woman now being a mama and hopefully someday like a, a grandma and just somebody in the church body that the lord will walk with me and guide me and lead me but his constant love and affection and plan for me and purpose is just it's always there and it's never going to leave. So I pray you are encouraged to clean and motivated to clean today. And I will see you next time. Bye friends.